A few days after Superstorm Sandy devastated the eastern coast, I was in the Rockaways delivering donations. Potatoes to the bugger, whatever it is, you're sharing. I was asked to deliver my goods to a nearby laundromat on Beach 25th and Secret Avenue, an outdoor distribution center that was just opening that day. It was there that I met Sharon. Blanket line over here! Yeah. Blankets! Cobijas a este lado, comida a ese otro. Matches, gangle on this side! Fosforos, Everybody on this side? A ese lado. All right. We really got hit um, over here, and it's like we were one of the forgotten ones on this side. You know, so as everybody over here look up to me, I try to organize it so everybody could get a little bit of what is out there for them. Sharon was at this location for over a month until they started to clean out the laundromat from the storm. She felt that the debris resulting from the cleanup process was too hazardous to her health as well as to others. So she decided to move to a nearby community garden on Secret Avenue and Beach 31st. The next time I saw Sharon was on December 7th. It was the day after she was evicted from the community garden. She was asked to leave because they said they needed to test the soil. I found her on Beach 33rd Street and Seagirt Avenue. This was her third location. She was the only remaining distribution center serving this area. Well, when we're told that we can no longer use a garden, it really, you know, it was sad yesterday to know that, you know, I stepped up to the plate to help my community and at the end of the day, here's a center that we were operating under and then we were told that we can't use it no more. But as I say, in life you have ups and downs and, you know, there's cha you, you got to adjust the changes and um. I'm here for the changes. What, if it's good, I'm going to be here. And if it's bad, I'm going to be here. If it's, if it's up to me, I would stop. But I have people that depend on me for supplies. There's a great need for stuff still in this area because there's a lot of people who still don't have light, still don't have heat in their apartment. So whatever little assistance I could give to them and their family, I'm going to do it. Well, I could say I have, on a daily basis, like over a hundred people. Yeah. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah. Oh my God. My first birth, baby. <laughs> oh. And we gotta get you a tent and a heater and all sorts of things and a banner. Oh Lord. Let's talk. Yes. Let's unload first. All right. John Dunn works with Long Island City Cares and has been working with Sharon for five weeks. She helps distribute donations to Sharon as well as others along the peninsula. As do others, such as this church group that came all the way from central Pennsylvania. We found out about her through making our drive arounds to see who needed what. And the further we came down to Far Rockaway, the more we saw that there was an immense need. So we focused on this area in order to make a difference. How I got involved in this after Hurricane Sandy hit, it was hard for residents over here. They had distribution centers set up along Far Rockaway. But what a lot of people is forgetting, Far Rockaway is a big area. What about us here? What about us? We are affected just like Breezy Point and other places. But we wasn't getting the support and the, what we needed. So as a resident of here, I stepped up to the plate and started doing it. If they don't fit, please do not take them. Let somebody else who really need them, get them. If you don't need it, do not take it from the table. And the other reason is my son was murdered four months ago on Beach 28th Street and Secret Avenue. And for most of it, the community was here with me and for me. So for me, giving back to my community, this is what I decided to do so that my community could get help, the necessary things that they needed for their family and themselves. 
Why do we love Sharon? Because she has the determination and strength of a hundred women. Yep. And she took a bad thing and made it into a blessing. She's inspirational. We come here just because we get a high off of her. <laughs> and we love her. So we will do everything we can to keep her totally. We're going to get her a tent. We'll get her heating. The whole bit. Before Hurricane Sandy hit, I always go on the boardwalk every Saturday morning. And the Saturday before, I ask the Lord to use me in whatever way he wants. I'm available. And for some reason, I just get up and say, I'm going to do this, you know. And honestly, I feel good about it. And I thank the Lord for helping me, for guiding me, and where I'm at today. I stopped by Sharon's place a week later. Things had definitely improved. There were tents, heating units, lots of goods, deliveries from all over the city, and a lot of activity to prepare for the Christmas party on the following Sunday. However, Sharon seemed a little down. She later confided to me that today was the fifth month anniversary of her son Sean's death. Every month, but it's coming 13. This is one of the days where I don't really look forward to because so they make it five months, I lost my son. And it's not the same. It's not the same. One minute I'm up, another minute I'm down. I don't mean to cry, but I can't help it today. And it's close to Christmas and my son is not here with me. And my son is not here. This time of year, you always put up the Christmas tree in the house, always do the decoration. And this Christmas, I'm not putting up no tree. I, I don't really have a Christmas this year. I mean, I have life, yes. But what is life without my son when he's not around? And the hardest part about the person who murdered my son is still running around with his family. And I don't have my son with me. It's so hard. It's so hard. At 2.45, I'm going to buy some balloons. That's the time that he got shot. So like 18 balloons and release it. And at 7.40, Free. That's the time he died. I'm gonna light some candles in memory of my son. It's so hard. This is a picture that they did for me and my son after he passed. This is a member of my son, Sean. On the 13th of every month, I do this. What is sending the balloons to the sky to represent for you? Just let him know that he's not forgotten. He's not here and hurt with us, but we still remember him. Ready? We ask for nothing in return but the blessings to keep us going every day, one foot in front of the other, and to let you know that we remember you today. We sent off these blue and white balloons and that happy face to let you know that the sun is shining today. And that sunshine, we know, comes from within you. And the sunshine holds the love that we hold in our heart for you. So in God we trust. And you'll never be forgotten. We love you, Sean. Ma, look, I wrote Daddy loves you. We love you. I had to get that in there. I had to get it. Yeah. Look, it's a good look, look, look. Keep smiling, my baby. May you continue to rest in peace and watch over us each and every day, guide our path as we go.
They said the Lord give it and the Lord take it, but you're not, you will never be forgotten. I love you, son. We all love you. Sharon has taken this tragedy and turned it into something positive. She's created a non-profit organization entitled Rockaway Guardians in memory of her son, Sean Plummer. This organization will help to keep youth in the neighborhood off the streets. You wouldn't want me to be crying every day. You want me to do what I have to do, and that's what I'm doing. And as I say, with the support of my friends and my family and my community behind me, I think I'll be okay. A few days later, Sharon hosted a huge Christmas party for the children in the neighborhood. Today is all about the kids. They've been through a lot, and at least, you know, we could have them smiling today. Merry Christmas! Whoa, ho, ho. Merry Christmas! Then, in early January, Sharon was once again evicted from this lot because the government needed it for construction purposes. Despite that setback, Sharon is continuing to pursue her dreams of opening an after-school program and a daycare center for children in the neighborhood.